would like now I would like now to call the president of Bulgaria Rosen Plevnevnev to come to present his own keynote speech. Dear friends, let me first congratulate all of you with the Day of Europe. And let me thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you, share some thoughts about our union and about the way we navigate in turbulent times. It has been five years since the crisis began and it's unlikely that it will end up anytime soon. It started as a financial, it moved to economic and political, social, but the most difficult one to solve is the debt crisis and the crisis of trust and confidence. The complexity of this crisis is unique in our most recent history. There is no doubt about that. There is no simple solution. There is no ready-to-use recipe. We need to find the answers as we move with limited resources and with time restrictions. We act as politicians, but we also act as crisis managers. We have on our radar screen today many structural inefficiencies and imbalances in the economic and financial structure of our union, irresponsible financial practices, unsustainable levels of public debt, low competitiveness on national, on regional level, etc. But how did it happen? When? We are talking about Growth. We're preaching for growth today, but we have been growing so strongly until 2007. Europe was going on an average with a growth of 3%. In my country, the growth was 6% a year. What are the lessons learned from this period of strong growth? First lesson is, when you grow, make sure you build reserves for bad times to come. My grandmother was telling me, my boy, in good times, save money for bad times. But many banks, families, regions, governments in Europe, they have consumed on a maximum without building up any reserves. That was not the case in my country, where we have learned from a very heavy crisis in 1997, one third of the banks went bust, and we have learned a lesson that we need to create a reserve. And when a bad time hits, it helps a lot. Here is another lesson from the crisis, and I think from the strong growth period in 2007, and I think it's a very important one. When you grow, make sure you make a progress too. Bank portfolios were expanding for decades rapidly, but at the end, was it a progress? Did they make real profits or virtual ones? Real estate prices in Germany until 2007 for 10 years went up 18%. In Ireland, 180%, 10 times higher. When the crisis hit, the Germans were stable, but Ireland was falling down from the 10th floor. Some countries and sectors were growing in a very sustainable way but some others inflated heavily. And in order to make a progress, I would like to be very clear on that, they had not to grow, but they had to fall in order to reach a stable ground. And then they can grow again later. Every crisis teaches us lessons. Lessons learned, but is no guarantee that another crisis won't hit. But it helps a lot to soften the blow next time. To wrap up the lessons for our problems today, the way you grow programs the way you fall later. Europe lived and grew on a credit for way too long. European families, companies, mayors, regions, governments, states, they have spent for decades more than they had produced. And now we need to rebalance. It takes time. That's all about sustainability. After eating too much, you go on a diet. But after eating too much for decades, you go on a very long diet, and that's healthy. 
and that's sustainable. So there is a lot of work to be done and it's painfully hard, but we should keep moving forward. There is no quick and easy solution, but there are right and wrong decisions. Over the last few years, the European Union undertook very important reforms. Member states of the European Union and the European institutions have started a number of measures, reinforcing economic governments and budgetary discipline at a national level, building a stronger banking sector in Europe, increasing competitiveness, promoting economic growth and employment. But implementing reforms takes time, and achieving positive results takes even longer. And when you're running out of time and people start losing patience, it can be really difficult. Many European governments have already paid a heavy price. But no matter how hard it is, we should not give up. What we have achieved for the last few years should not be neglected. And in 2013, we will continue on a European and national level to deliver on our strategic priorities for stable and integrated Europe. There is an ongoing debate about growth and austerity. I don't like the word growth. Uh, I don't like the word austerity, I'm sorry. I don't like the word austerity. But I like very much the word fiscal discipline. Let me be clear. Fiscal discipline of itself is a prerequisite for sustainable growth. Some declared that the era of austerity is over, but the era of fiscal discipline should remain. Growth doesn't just happen. There is no magic formula for all of us. Brussels can't just give us growth on a silver plate. Before you grow, you need to create the potential to grow, which means reforms. We should implement custom-made reforms because our problems were not created in Brussels. Brussels is not a convenient excuse of what happens on national level about competitiveness in economy. The problems were created on national level and they need to be addressed on national level with clear reforms. We all need a sound basis to build upon. And I believe that the sound basis is where fiscal discipline and financial discipline, but combined with smart policies, with limited resources, but smart policies for competitiveness, for employment, is unavoidable and it's important for our fundamentals. You cannot create lasting growth by simply printing money or going just into more debt. You have to gradually put in order what isn't in order, said a European finance minister recently, and he's right. Some impatient politicians today see more debt as an answer. They suggest that the debt-ridden continent needs to stimulate growth at all costs, even including more debt. Some others object heavily by saying that abandoning the efforts to stabilize the deficits will lead to renewed pressure on the euro. Interest rates have stayed reasonably low in the last year, and that is a remarkable achievement. But this could be heavily damaged, and it could be quickly changed with uncontrollable consequences for heavily indebted governments if we now change. And I think that those who object are right too. But here is another important lesson from the crisis. You cannot live for decades on a credit. At some point, someone has to pay the bill. We better make sure that it's not our children who pay the bill, which makes so important that the culture of stability and the culture of responsibility will dominate on all political levels in Europe today. The financial and economic crisis continues much longer than everyone expected and carries dramatic social consequences with it. Frozen income, growing cost of living, combined with high unemployment, contribute to a difficult social situation of our citizens all over Europe and in my country. Today, the most important issue for the national governments and the European Union is to regain the trust of those who are disillusioned 
and who need help. Many citizens have the feeling that solidarity in Europe is a unilateral thing. Public support for reforms is dramatically declining. Many believe that there is too little leadership and ability to act and that the EU gets lost in some bureaucratic details and does not work enough on important matters such as employment, competitiveness, education. This is not true, but we can do better. Targeted programs to support the SMEs, to link universities with business, educational and administrative reform with e-government solutions, investing in an infrastructure, linking our energy networks, energy efficiency always does well and makes sense. Launching a long overdue reforms, opening up products, services, improving the business environment, making the labor market more flexible, restoring market and investors' confidence, and starting credible fiscal consolidation programs with targeted actions to support the economy always makes sense too. A key condition for achieving sustainable development on a long term is to address the socio-economic deficiencies with the member states and increase convergence in Europe. Cohesion policy, I'll put it in a sentence, is a pure growth policy and we need to strengthen it further. And when resources are limited, we should choose our priorities wisely and carefully. We must focus our efforts in a few key areas with competitive advantages. Completing the single market is one of them. Unleashing the unused potential could contribute significantly to the collective objective of bringing European economies back to recovery. The EU 2020 strategy is another very good tool, but we need to plan further to widen our focus. We need to set ambitious goals in the field of innovation, education, and research that go far beyond 2020 so that Europe remains one of the leaders in this very tough race when China, India, and many other countries in the world are coming with armies of well-educated and motivated scientists and young people for us to stay strong in this tough race for the future technologies and products. Dear friends, today we are also focusing on fighting the crisis and we sometimes forget what the European Union is all about the principles and the values that we share and stand up for in our quest for answering the economic challenges, we should not lose our moral compass. We should not forget the legacy of our founding fathers. Yes, we have problems, but we have values. One of them should be the free movement of people and labor do all politicians in the European Union stay to the core value of the European Union today? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Here is an example. Recently, we see an active campaign in some European member states against Romanian and Bulgarian Roma, blaming them, branding them as social criminals, I will not be surprised if arrogant populists soon propose that we should make them with a star like they have done with the Jews in the Second World War. Haven't we learned our lessons from the past? Every member state is free to adjust its social system. But if those politicians who ride the wave of populism and play with people's concerns, succeed by limiting basic human rights and rules of our common market, European Union will be heavily damaged, not because of the Roma, but because of those who are afraid of them. Tough times require tough decisions. In the 20th century and before, when it was difficult, when there was no other decision, they took a political decision. The political decision was the symbol of the decision. Unfortunately, it is not the case today. 
Sometimes political decisions are no decisions at all. Sometimes politicians delay, shift responsibilities and important decisions to the next. And I think that business-like approach, clear action plans, addressing the problems, bringing solutions, this will help a lot. Today, we need to make some important political decisions about the euro as a common currency, about our enlargement process, about the different speeds in Europe, about our budget, about our brand, image, and also about our ambition and role in a fast-changing and developing world. Some might think that the euro is a weak currency, but if we take a look at the exchange rate with the dollar, we get the right answer. The euro is a successful project, not a matter of survival. The world trusts the euro, we trust it either. We improve the coordination of our finance, tax, economic, infrastructure, research and science policies. No country wants to leave the currency union and nobody should be forced to leave. Even the thinking that it should got better for all if some southern European countries leave the currency union is wrong. It's not good for the Germans and it's not good for the southern Europeans. The thesis that the new currency's devaluation as consequence of withdrawal from the union will help is just cynical. The consequence that everything in Greece, Cyprus or another country will get cheaper is economic mischief. With those countries import quarter of today, it will take a generation for the domestic industry to adjust the loss of purchasing power caused by the jump of prices for imported goods. So this is a bad decision, and it's a pure populism to me. The difficulties Europe is facing today should not be a valid reason to hinder enlargement process, to continue the EU enlargement process based on our core values, including good neighborly relationships, and sharing our common history is the only way to create a region of stability, prosperity, and free movement. And that's all what the European Union is all about. During the crisis, the brand Europe suffered. But we don't want to be a symbol of failure or close ourselves in our own problems to be divided and weak. The European Union should be more ambitious. It depends on the European Union to be a global player, even the biggest and the most influential one. Look at what we have achieved after the Second World War. We have witnessed an unprecedented transformation of Europe for peace and prosperity. We have a unique example for the world to follow. From continent divided by wars and conflicts to the biggest economy, to the best place to live, that all happened in front of our eyes. We have started two major projects of historical importance for the world in the last 20 years. The euro as a common currency and spreading democracy east. 12 countries already joined. Croatia is the next one to come, and that is a huge success for Europe and an example for the next to follow. Look at the remarkable progress on the Balkans. 15 years ago, there were bombings. There was a war. Today, borders and visa restrictions are falling. Highways, railways, bridges are built to connect and bring people and cultures together. And that's a remarkable change, which gives an example to the world. So without the European Union of 27, soon 28, and the common currency, Europe would be divided, would be weak, isolated, markets will be small and difficult, and every country will be less competitive, every nation will be less prosperous. So we have achieved a lot, but we are in the middle of our trip and there are problems to be solved. And that is a good news. Otherwise, it would be too easy.
too boring for all of us. So dear friends, let us adjust wisely our speed and direction and let us continue this journey to the future of our union. Thank you.